Hello students, welcome to the today's class of Theory of Machines. Today's class is the second part of the lecture on introduction to brakes. Yesterday, in the first part of the lecture, we discussed about the basic concepts of brakes. We also discussed about the detailed classification of brakes. After which, we discussed about the band brakes and we understood its working through an animation. Further, we discussed its types that is simple and differential brand brakes. Here we also discussed the concepts of self-locking and self-energizing brakes. Having discussed all this, now proceeding with the second part of this lecture on introduction to brakes, we will today learn about the block brakes, internal and external block brakes, band and block brake and a little about the disc brake also. So let us start our discussion on block brakes. This is the block brake. This is a single block brake and this is how the lever is pressed from the free end. Let us see it once again. This is how the block brake works. And this is the direction of the pressure or the force that has been applied by the shoe. So it is classified as a radial brake. A block or shoe brake consists of a block or a shoe which is pressed against the rotating drum. The force on the drum is increased by using the lever. If only one block is used for the purpose, a side thrust on the bearing of the shaft supporting the drum will act. This will be prevented by using two blocks on the two sides of the drum as seen here. This also doubles the breaking torque. So in this case two blocks are used on both the sides and force is applied from both the ends. So that's how the breaking torque is doubled. A softer material than that of drum or the rim of the wheel is used to make the blocks so that these can be replaced easily on wearing. Next the internal and external expanding brake. Earlier automobiles used band brakes which were exposed to dirt and water. Their heat dissipation capacity was also poor. Then brand brakes were replaced by internal expanding shoe brakes having at least one self energizing shoe per wheel. This results in tremendous friction giving great braking power without excess use of pedal pressure. Figure shows the internal shoe automobile brake. It consists of two semicircular shoes these are the two semicircular shoes which are lined with the friction material these are the friction material the shoe is pressed against the inner flange of the drum when the brake is applied under the normal running of the vehicle the drum rotates freely as the outer diameter of the shoe is less than the internal diameter of the drum the actuating force is applied by two equal diameter pistons in a common hydraulic cylinder and is applied equally in magnitude to each other. Let us see how this internal expanding brake works. You can see these are the two semicircular brake shoes to which this friction lining is attached. This is how the internal expanding brake works. You can see as the pedal is pressed these semicircular shoes are pressed outside are moved outside to press the drum and the brake is applied. See it once again. So this is the friction lining on the semicircular shoe. Through this the brake is applied. This is the drum on which this is mounted. This is the spring by which these are these semicircular shoe brakes are expanded and they are they are pulled back by the help of this return springs these are the return springs and this is the self adjusting system as in when the friction lining is worn out you can adjust friction lining by the help of this screw in the self adjusting system so it can be used for a longer period so this is how internal expanding brake works this is the external expanding shoe brake in this the drum is pressed by the two shoes from the outer periphery. 
This is the bend and block break. A bend and block break consists of number of wooden blocks secured inside a flexible steel bend. So these are the wooden blocks which are wooden or rubber blocks which are secured inside the bend. When the break is applied, the blocks are pressed against the drum. The two sides of the bend become tight and slack as usual. Wooden blocks have higher coefficient of friction thus increasing the effectiveness of the break. Now let us discuss about disc break. Though disc break is not included in your syllabus, we will still see that as it is widely used nowadays in your bikes. So I thought I should discuss it with you all. In disc break, basically there is a brake caliper which is having brake pad inside it and this is the disc which rotates and the wheel is connected to this part. So as the pressure is applied hydraulically through the brake horse, these brake pads are pressed towards the rotor and thus the brake is applied. So let's see how the disc brake works. This is the typical example of the disc brake how it works. Let's see it once again. The wheel is rotating and the force is applied like this. So the applied force you can see here is in the axial. Once again this is the axis of rotation and these are the applied force. So the applied force is in the axial direction that's why the disc brake is classified as axial brakes. So this is all about the basics of brakes and classification of brakes. In next video we will see how the analysis of brakes is carried out. Thank you very much.